Hi, right, so I've owned my uh, toy hauler from Dunesport now for two and a half years. I bought it back in April, and uh, it's November the 8th, uh, 2018 today. And I've had some requests that people wanted to know. I'd, I'd like to see it out in the fields, you know, how you're actually using it now. So I've... Uh, I've had a lot of fun with this trailer. Not only does it fit my needs perfectly, but um, I've just had fun because on the times when it's too hot to go out in the field, I've sort of put little creature features in here just to, to uh, make life uh, more enjoyable. Now, granted, it's sort of a mess right now because I've been in it for a few days and uh, out prospecting for gold down in uh, Arizona. So uh, I'm down in Morristown right now. But uh, I'll just give you some idea. One of the things when I initially had talked about uh, getting the uh, toy hauler was that the bed was manual. And it, it worked fine for me. I, I'm not claustrophobic, but my wife could not handle it uh, because of the fact that it's pretty dark on close to the ceiling because we put a a nice Sealy Posturepedic queen size uh, mattress on it. But uh, I took it back and had it retrofitted with a electronic lift. So I'm actually laying in bed right now. I just woke up. And uh, so it's very comfortable to sleep in, by the way. And uh, this is what it looks like from my perspective with the electronic lift. Uh, as you can see, I got plenty of room. All right, now I don't think anybody, anybody would think they were claustrophobic in here not even my wife because instead of having you know your face uh, 14 inches from the ceiling um you've got oh gee at least four feet i would imagine some of the other little accoutrements that i've put in here is that um unfortunately there was no light up here in the uh in this area in the bed area so if you want to lay here before you uh, went to sleep and read a book or something like that. Um, there was no light. So I got some of these under counter lights uh, that are very inexpensive that you can pick up at Home Depot and I wired them and uh, I did the same thing uh, underneath the bed because in the dining area uh, there's also no light there. And so that's a that's been a nice feature and then over here i had no way to charge my phone so what i did is uh wired one of these little uh, 12 volt with a, a couple of usb ports right in there um i went to uh, uh ikea is a great place because they have all this knickknack stuff and you can just walk around there and, and uh, find stuff but this little bamboo uh, cabinet you see here that's uh you want sliding doors on anything you put in this thing because you don't want anytime you have to open a door it takes up space so anyway but i i got this little uh this little ikea cabinet it was in fact too uh deep so i had to cut the back off it and modify it a little but uh it works great it gives me a little extra storage uh, my television, of course, fits right here very nicely, and uh, it swings out away from the wall and right at the foot of the bed, so it's perfect to lay in bed and watch television. I actually made that little sliding cabinet right there. Um, I couldn't find anything, and I thought, you know, that's wasted space. Uh, I could certainly put something in there, hold some cans of soup and, and things of that nature, and I... Uh, what I actually did with it is I put two little super magnets on each piece of the wood. So when this comes together, it sort of locks closed. But as you can see, that uh, I put some little bars in there. So nothing uh, for my first attempt at, at wood building. And then over here, I put a little, a little block so stuff doesn't fall out. Everything, you know, as you know, if you own a trailer, uh, when you move whatever you think is secure is not um put lots of hooks around because you can always use hooks uh over here again right at the, the very top right there i put a little block of wood 
you know, just to keep things from flying out. So I keep my, keep my, uh, my blood pressure medicine and things like that up there and, uh, keep my uh, tissues from flying onto the floor. Um, let's see what else did I do here? I, uh, oh yeah, I put these little, uh, I put these little hooks on all the cabinets. That way they don't end up flying open. So they're real simple to install. And so anyway, it's uh, it works out really well for, for what I do. Oh, these things were great. Another Ikea product. These little things come right off, but they snap on and they're secure enough that they don't move. Um, but these, these little cups are less than a dollar at Ikea. And the little bar to put them on is $1.99, I believe. And these little hooks here, I, I don't know, you get a package of six of them for like 58 cents. And so, like I said, uh, you'll have to excuse the mess, but this is, this is the way it is. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a homemaker. I'm a, I'm a prospector, semi-retired one. So anyway, so here, um, I didn't, uh, let's see, I can't think of anything else I did that was extremely important. So now I've got this electronic lift. And in the daytime, I can lift that all the way up. and got plenty of clearance. And, whoops, one thing you have to watch is that you, my pillow uh, is getting caught there between that. Oh, that's the other thing that I did do. Um, I put, I took some little L brackets, uh, big wide ones, and uh, I mounted them on the the bed, li uh, the uh, platform down here, of over here, and at the bottom, because of the fact that there's a lot of room at the foot of this bed, and the mattress has a tendency, as you're traveling, to want to shift. And what happens is when it shifts, then you can't get it to go up because the mattress has a tendency sometimes to get under the valance. Um, I guess that's what they call it, over the windows. But as you can see, this goes way up there. Okay, so there. So, so you've got plenty of head clearance, as you can see. I mean, this is, uh, uh, I don't know if I can give you any kind of a perspective here, but um, I'm 5'8", five, 5'7", five, with, probably without my shoes. But anyway, uh, so, you know, I, I think somebody who is six foot would have a tendency to want to bend over, but uh, just, just because, but... Uh, it's uh it's good oh i i got one of these little usb fans it's really nice you can just put it on a hook and or sit it up there on the uh on the top of the uh, the cabinet there to keep yourself cool it really doesn't take a lot to in the desert anyway to stay cool because in the evenings as you know it cools down quite a bit anyway so you just need to circulate the air a little but here's the uh here's those little lights that i put on I put one over there and one over here because there's actually no lighting uh, back in here. It's sort of dark. And uh, Dune Sport probably needs to think about that. And then back here, because there is no there is no closet per se uh, in this. There's just not room for it in this little 12-footer. Um, but I just, put a, I just put a clothes bar in there. So I can hang my stuff at the back. It's out of the way. Uh, this thing has been giving me <laughs> giving me issues. It uh, it keeps uh, it keeps bending, and I can see right now I'm going to have to come up with something a little more substantial because it, all it is is uh, it was something to hold uh, paper towels. And so anyway, I mean those are you know some of the improvements. I've got my my little coffee pot. I just use a little bungee to hold that in. Um, I would recommend that you make sure you get a refrigerator at least this size. This is not the biggest one, 
I think it's the mid-size one, but it really, really, uh, you just need space. And uh, you're never going to kick yourself for having too much room. So anyway, this is what I've done on the inside. Obviously, these uh, I, ha I actually have my uh, my ATV with me. Um, these fold up. These dinette sets fold up here. That folds up there. And real easy. Bring my ATV in here and uh, strap it down, and I'm good to go. And uh, when I get to uh, my location, first thing I do is I drop that door in the back and take my ATV off and then put my, ch my, my chairs down. The thing I do like to do, just to try to keep things somewhat organized, is I have my, I have my little, uh, my little uh, sponge mop here. And uh, so I'll take and put just a little floor cleaner in the sink and get that damp. And once I've got my ATV off, I'll run over the floor to get the dirt off the floor and and run it off over that back uh, that back black area. Um, it takes a whole two minutes, but just to make things make things look nicer. Um, I said, we've got plenty of hooks. Uh, you never have too many hooks. I've found out. Just uh, it just keeps things organized. So anyway, that's uh, in terms of livability. Um, it's exactly what they call it. They call it a man cave. <laughs> And uh, for me and prospecting, this is all I need. Uh, you know, I've got the got the nice little uh, shower in there. And uh, it helps me get the grime off at the end of the day of prospecting, get the sunscreen off. And, and I uh, fix myself something quick. I usually try to get something that's uh, microwavable uh, that I can sit down and eat because I don't really want to spend a lot of time prepping food and uh but you know here's uh you know here's the capacity of, of the refrigerator which is pretty nice i've got it running on lp gas right now so anyway later i'll go outside and uh, i'll show you some of the little improvements that i've made out there uh one of the things i did find was necessary i was down in uh, quartzite arizona uh, back in I think March and it was really still and I'd been running my generator watching television in the evening also run the air conditioning because it was really hot down there it was like 112 and my carbon monoxide alarm went off well the generator exhausts right on the opposite side of the wall from the carbon monoxide um, uh, detector and uh, it it uh, I think what happened with it being so still, that carbon monoxide was just sort of sitting there. So I got something that they sell at the camping stores. It's called a Genturi. And all it is is PVC pipe, but there's a, a metal fitting that goes on your exhaust. And what it does is, is it runs the exhaust up and over your uh, RV uh, or your toy hauler or whatever you've got to get that exhaust up and away from you so you don't have that issues. Now, I've, I ran the generator the first night, maybe three hours. I ran it probably three hours last night um, and no problems whatsoever w with that installed. So it really works well. So we'll give you a tour of the outside um, when I get a chance, get myself uh, put together. I'm still in my pajamas. So anyway, hope uh, that gives you some insight and just some of the little tricks you can do to make this more livable, give yourself a little more storage space. And uh, I, oh, I also installed some uh, uh, some 12 volt outlets right here, right here and right here um, because they didn't have any. Oh, and you know what? This is really, really neat. I don't have my glasses on, so I don't know if I can, can see it. Um, uh, the name of it, but hopefully you can. This thing right here, this checks, there's a little bitty uh, monitor that has a magnet on it and it's it, it's a uh, ultrasonic thing and it goes on the bottom of your propane tanks and this will tell you how full your propane is and wow is that great and it also uh you don't need to use this if you don't want to because there's also an app on your phone and the app talks to those little uh those little modules via bluetooth i suppose or something like that and you can see right on your phone just exactly how full 
your uh, propane tanks are so you know where you're at. None of that pouring water down the side of the tank to see, uh, you know, whether or not you can figure out if you've got propane left. This tells you uh, exactly the percentage of propane you have left. So I think that's pretty neat. I've got these little bitty fans and they're nice because, you know, if you really want to move some air. Like I said, a lot of times when you come back and it's it's a little warm, um, you know, all you really have to do is just uh, open the screen door, get the air circulating a little, get some of the hot air blown out, and uh, this thing works great. I just uh, hang it hang it right here, and then uh, just it runs. This thing actually runs on D's, but uh, it also has a little uh, adapter, so. Uh, I just plug the little adapter in. These adapters are nice. The, they're uh, multi-voltage, and they also have a USB port in them. So uh, if you've got something else you need to charge, it gives you that availability. All right, so this is Doc from DocsDetectingSupply.com talking about my Dune Sport toy hauler, which two and a half years, still going strong. Love it. Oh, yeah, I also installed these things. These real tall, uh, these real tall cabinets because you don't have a lot of square footage on the floor, but you can go vertical with things. So I put all my sort of accessory utility items that I might need outside right here um, because that way I can just open the door and reach inside and grab them. But uh, so there you go. I I think I've covered most of the the uh, things that I've done in here. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I've gotten a lot of positive comments on the first video I've done uh, when I bought the uh, the rig. And uh, then I got a few negative comments about, uh, you talk too much. But uh, I, I, I was excited about buying the toy hauler. I'm still excited about using the toy hauler. It's really a lot of fun. It... For somebody like me that's 69 years old, I, I just had some skin cancer removed from my head. I mean, I'm just too old to do the thing in the tent anymore. I can't, I can't do that. I've got to, uh, I've got to have some of the creature comforts uh, of home, even if they are scaled down. And I really don't feel like I'm giving up anything here. Uh, is it tight? Yeah, it's tight, but I'm not holding parties here. You know, the, you could, two people could, you know stay in here uh, naturally you'd have to say hold it I'm coming through you know stand aside but uh, it, it's it's for what I do it's easy to pull it's easy on gas I think I, with my uh, uh, with my eco diesel ram that I'm pulling it with um, I'm getting 12 miles a gallon and that's pretty amazing because I mean considering this thing's got an ATV in it as well um, you know, you're, you're towing quite a bit, but no problems towing at all. I mean, no problems maintaining the speed limit or going faster than the speed limit. Uh, I catch myself doing it every once in a while. So um, I'll talk to you later when we do a little tour of the outside. Take care. How you doing? This is Doc. I told you I'd give you a little uh, run around the outside of the uh, RV uh, toy hauler from Dune Sport in Mesa, Arizona, and show you the things I've done here. Um, first thing I did was... Uh, I got one of these nice racks and uh, one of these uh, these boxes because uh, this thing just does not have much storage at all. So I got my tools and stuff locked in there. That's a really nice feature. I also highly recommend these auto lifts so you don't have to crank things all the time. This thing just up or down and I put a little, uh, you know, a couple little uh, levelers there so I know when I got everything level. And uh, this... There's no place to put the dookie tube. And uh, I have to uh, thank some people on one of the forums that uh, actually showed me this little trick. Uh, they said to go to Lowe's and get yourself a, a, a plastic uh, a fence post, uh, which that's what this is. And then uh, uh, get a plastic gutter uh, for it. And it makes like a little uh, little pull out there. And I just cut cut some wood on the outside and put a little knob on it. So all my dookie tube stuff just sits right in there, real nice. And I I learned real quick though um, that you got to put holes in this thing because uh, the uh, 
the fence post comes with a couple holes in it. What happens is that the air goes in the holes and then it blows the cap off. So you have to have some place for the, uh, the air to, to vent out. So I uh, did that, but that was, uh, that was a quick, relatively easy thing to do. Um, I just tried to mount it with some different kinds of brackets that I found there at Lowe's and, and use some, uh, some U clamps to hold it on. So anyway, so that works pretty good. Oh, the other thing I did is <clears throat> I bought a uh, Bluetooth camera system. It came with two cameras. And so I got one mounted up there. And I got one mounted in the back. And the one that I've got mounted out there is primarily so in the dark I can see that I'm not jackknifing this thing, um, jackknifing the truck into it. I also put some extra lights here on the back of my truck um, so I can see because the the trailer actually sort of blocks your uh, backup lights. And it really doesn't function very well. So then I talked to you before about that Gen Turi. So here's the little Gen Turi pipe thing. And uh, as you can see, it goes up there and vents the exhaust off the, uh, out of the top and still letting it just sit around here. It, um, it There's a little uh, clamp piece here. You clamp this adapter on and then that stays on the... The rig it the whole time and you just pull the pin out and pull this and it's in three pieces that just pulled apart and they give you a nice little zipper bag and you can put it in there but now I don't have to worry about dying in my sleep um, because I sleep pretty sound I might not even hear that that carbon monoxide alarm and uh, back here I also when I turn the backup lights I've got a switch uh, with a relay those backup lights on the truck I also put ran that through to here so when i flip that light on um, on the back of the truck i also flip it on here and then as i said before um, i've got another camera up there so i can see exactly where i'm backing and not be freaked out and i put a gas can there and so uh basically i think that's pretty much the extent oh this one thing this is sort of cool this is um this is uh, i highly recommend this this little thing it's just a solar uh, um, Cree light uh, thing. And what's really nice about it, when you're uh, coming back to the trailer at night, like we'll be sitting around the campfire tonight. When I come back to the trailer at night, even though the little yellow light is on, it's really not enough for an old guy like me to see my keys. Well, when you walk up, this thing illuminates and you see your keys and it illuminates the steps and you know, you're know you not falling all over yourself. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the little uh, visit to um, what this uh, rig looks like out in the desert when I'm using it. Um, as you can see, I detached the, my pickup truck so I can go and do things like go get gas for the ATV if I need it because we're not too far away from town. But I'm going to step in back here so you can get a better view. And uh, there you go. That's what the rig looks like. And that ATV goes right in that, uh, in that rig. So it works really well. All right, thanks guys. I hope you uh, got something out of this video. You seem to enjoy the last one. So this is uh, two and a half years now. We're down the road and I still love it. And I, the only thing I maybe would have done different is I might have had them flip the axle. Uh, if they flip the axle, it makes it actually higher and gives you uh, more ground clearance. And it also, it, uh, it eliminates the wheel well. So inside you don't have a wheel well that's uh, taking up room. But uh, for where I go, um, I haven't had any problems yet with ground clearance, but I just think that might have been a, might have been a good idea to, to uh, have them flip the axle on this. And also dual axles. Um, dual axles just, may, even though, though this is short, I, maybe they don't even make dual axles on, on one this short, I'm not sure. But uh, dual axles would be nice being you've got the, got the ATV in there, that extra weight. All right, take care. And uh, call uh, call Dune Sport. Casey's a good guy. He's still down there. In fact, all those guys have been there as long as I've been dealing with them. So they seem to always be willing to help you out and just tell them that you saw Doc's video. And uh, I don't get anything for that, but um, but I, I really enjoyed working with those guys. Matter of fact, I, I don't know if 
I told a story or not, but I, um, I, matter of fact, I was out here and uh, I was talking about jackknifing the, the rig and I did that. I was out here, I got here like one in the morning. It was pitch black. I mean, there was nothing and I couldn't see what I was doing. And I was backing up and I heard this crunch and I thought, oh, what did I back into some of the bushes or something? I mean, it was just ever so slight, okay? I get out, it's dark, the only thing I want to do is get in the bed and get some sleep. I get up the next morning to find out that I had crunched uh, this side right here, um, right in here, uh, with the uh, corner of my truck, which was really great because that means that I had to get the truck repaired too. So I'm down, this where I'm at right now is in Morristown, Arizona, which is about an hour and a half, maybe two hours from Morris, uh, from uh, Mesa, uh, where Dune Sports at. So the very next day, I called, and I said, guys, I just uh, I did something so stupid. I want to know when I'm through with my little outing here, can I bring the rig down and drop it off? Because I don't want to drive all the way back to Vegas and then, you know, uh, and then set up a time and have to drive all the way back down there, drop it off, then you know, drive back to Las Vegas, then when it's done, drive back down again. So these guys, this is how amazing they are, um, they called me back and said, Doc, is there any chance that you could get it in tomorrow morning? And I go, what time? He says, when we open. I said, you know what? The heck with it. This outing isn't that important. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will leave tonight. And I'll go park in front of the, the warehouse yard right at the gates. So I'll be there in the morning when you guys get there. Do you know that those guys took that trailer in? They pulled off the damage. They, there was a couple boards on the inside where it broke. They replaced those. They fixed the damage. And they had me out of there going home the same day. If that's not customer service, I don't know what is. I mean, these guys realized my predicament and, you know, says, yeah, we're just going to have a couple guys. If, if we have to, we'll have a couple guys stay over to finish it. But they worked on it all day and got me out of there. I think I was out of there about 530 on the way home. So like one day service, I just drove my truck around. And, you know, I think I went to uh, Walmart. Or, I don't know. I did, went to Outback, had a steak or whatever. I mean, it was easy to call a day. So anyway... Good guys down there. Really good guys. You'll enjoy working with them. I'll talk to you later.